I want life to be normal. And I said, I don't want to be treated differently, you know, because it's hard to, you know, I don't want to be thought of as like this cancer patient. Cancer, it's a disease that knows no boundaries, striking those we know and love at any time. We had waited. There is a 95% chance that I would be a single parent in the next five years. Hear stories of survival. You are a survivor. I am, four, four years and counting. I am a breast cancer survivor and hope to be for the rest of my life. <laughs> and find out what you need to know to protect yourself. Early detection is really the way to go. Everyone and Happy New Year to all of you. I'm Healthline 3's Beth Fisher. For the next 30 minutes, we'll take a look at what you and your family need to do to protect yourself against cancer in this new year and where you can turn right here in Las Vegas for help. Cancer is in the news a lot these days, but sometimes knowing someone who's been hurt by it makes you view things a little differently. Here at News 3, we do know someone who has battled skin cancer. Actually, you know her too. I can see myself sitting there on that table that day, and I remember saying, I want to get on my, with my life, and he said, this is your life, and then I, you know, that was really hard. You know, that was the moment that I won't forget. The life Stacey Escalante has chosen for herself is that of a wife, mother, and a TV news reporter. She did not choose to be a cancer patient. She's finding out things that I have known all along about her. Um, her capability for maintaining a positive attitude is remarkable. And that's going to be the thing that, that uh, it's going to be the deciding factor in this, in this war. That's a war. It was during her second pregnancy with Gabriella, Stacy began to notice a small growth on her back. Husband Matt pushed her to get it checked out. If we had waited, there is a 95% chance that I would be a single parent in the next five years. They were always on me, wear sunscreen, put a hat on, you know, and I, I didn't listen, you know, and I feel like now I'm paying the price. Wow, honey, it looks great today. The surgery to remove the cancer left a large gaping hole in Stacy's back. It used to be kind of about that big. And that surgery also revealed the cancer had spread. And that was the worst news because that put her in a statistical group that's where the numbers are really scary. As soon as her wound heals, Stacy will need a second surgery to remove cancerous lymph nodes. Then years of follow-up care. Oh, thank you, Will. All my life, everyone said, you better watch it. You're going to get skin cancer, you know, as always. But it was, I never thought that skin cancer could be cancer, you know. And I guess I was ignorant. As I said, Stacy and her husband received bad news after her first surgery because lab results did reveal the cancer had spread to one of her lymph nodes. Stacy's Las Vegas doctors encouraged her to see one of the leading melanoma experts in the world at the John Wayne Cancer Institute. And so, on September 12th, Stacy went in for surgery again in case other lymph nodes were affected. She was only probably seven years old. She would get her dad's electric shaver and hold the cord and hold the shaver up to people's mouths and, interview, and people. interview them. She always wanted to be a reporter. Like all of us, Stacy you know, Escalante's parents are used to seeing Stacy on the news. Using TV, radio, and mail to But get now the books. news is about you know their what? daughter. Okay, okay, Let's try it. and eat and <laughs> relax. Yeah, you relax, sweetie. Stacy is fighting stage three melanoma. I love you. Mm, thanks. Let's get your hair. Oh, she's good. <sighs> Your hat. You look as good as I do. <laughs> You're right. I'm just excited for a nap. After surgery two months ago to remove a cancerous spot on her back, Stacy learned her cancer had spread to one of her lymph nodes. I love you. I love you. Stacy's Las Vegas doctors supported her decision to see the best melanoma experts in the country at the John Wayne Cancer Institute in Los Angeles. And even though most patients end up not needing this surgery, it's the only way to be sure the cancer is gone. Can I have the knife, please? Oncology surgeon Dr. John Morton is removing 14 lymph nodes from Stacy's groin area. 12 are near the skin, two are deep below the muscle. 
And you see I have under my hand this, this fatty layer that has lymph nodes in it. Stacy's lymph nodes will be sent to a pathologist to see if the cancer had spread. The pathology report will be very important in, to, in determining her risk for further disease and also determining how the doctors would like to treat her in the future. Dr. Peter Bosberg is Stacy's oncologist. He says his department sees five or more new melanoma patients each week. Patients like our Stacy. It's Stacy's story. I think really the take home message is that you have to protect yourself against the sun and early detection is very important. Stacy has a long road ahead of her, but both she and her family know her positive attitude and strength will get her through. My hopes are that, that we just pick up where we were before. You know, it's just kind of a bump on the road and just hope that she comes out, you know, well. She's got a lot to live for. God wants her to see these children grow up and, you know, for her and Matt and them to get on with their lives, you know, so. That's what it'll be, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Such a sweet family. Three days after surgery, Stacy learned the cancer had not spread any further to any additional lymph nodes. After months of recovery, Stacy is now cancer free and back on the air. She is currently undergoing additional treatment to make sure her cancer doesn't return. But Stacy wants you to remember her story in the hopes that you properly protect yourself against the sun that you see a dermatologist on a regular basis and play, pay close attention to any changes in your body. You know, every three minutes a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. Could one walk help to change that statistic? And I keep saying to myself, if, um, if you can survive the chemo, which was, you can survive a walk. Find out just how far thousands of women and men are willing to walk in hopes of finding a cure and how much money they raise just to participate in this event. Plus, more than 11,000 Nevadans will be diagnosed with cancer in 2006. Learn what symptoms you should watch out for and how to protect yourself when we come back. producers, editors, reporters, and photographers. To the engineers, master control operators, and our production crew. On behalf of everyone who brings you News 3 on the weekends, happy holidays. Today's Healthline 3 special report is brought to you in part by the Nevada Surgical Weight Loss Center, helping those who are 100 pounds or more overweight take the first step on the path to a healthier and happier life. For more details, visit us online at www.obesitynomorenv.com. Welcome back. You know, last year in 2005, when you combined all types of cancers, cancer surpassed heart disease as the number one killer of Americans. More than 11,000 Nevadans will be diagnosed this year. But there is hope, and one thing that can increase your chance for survival, early detection. Most cancers can be cured if they're caught early enough. Here's how you can detect the top five cancer killers before it's too late. Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer in 2005. In five, Peter Jennings died from the disease after years of smoking. Dana Reeve announced she's suffering from lung cancer but says she's never been a smoker. The most common symptoms uh, seen in lung cancer are cough and uh, oftentimes uh, blood in the sputum. Dr. Shamoon Ahmad is a local oncologist who worked with us to detail the top five cancer killers. The number one cause of lung cancer, is it smoking or is that a myth? Uh, no, it is. It certainly is. It is one of the closest associations we have uh, where doing something or not doing something either produces a cancer or prevents a cancer from happening. The second most common and deadliest cancer, colon cancer. The most common uh, sign and symptoms are either the person will have worsening constipation or bleeding uh, mixed with stools. They can also uh, notice weight loss. To help reduce your chances of colon cancer, eat a low-fat diet and start screening after age 50, even earlier if you have a family history. Hello. Miss Valerie, how are you? It's nice to see you. <laughs> My dear friend Valerie Tabor has battled and beat the number three cancer killer, breast cancer. Her advice, do regular self breast exams and be sure to get a baseline mammogram around age 35. Coming in at number four is pancreatic cancer. One of the worst types of cancers in terms of lack of uh, treatment, 
usually late diagnosis because of uh, the symptoms coming on quite late in the disease and the disease is advanced. So what should you look for? The typical symptoms would be weight loss, uh, jaundice, which is yellow discoloration of the skin as an indicator of something being wrong and obviously uh, the person should seek help soon. The fifth most common and deadliest cancer, prostate cancer. I've heard all men develop it. Is that true? Uh, if you live to be long, uh, long enough, yes. Okay. The incidence of prostate cancer starts to double uh, above uh, 60 years of age. So. Dr. Ahmad says in most cases, prostate cancer is a slow-growing cancer. It is curable if it's detected early, so pay attention to symptoms. You can either have uh, blood in the urine or decreased stream. Sometimes people will uh, present with enlargement of the prostate and the related symptoms. Early detection, immediate treatment, and a positive attitude. Three keys to beating the top five cancers. So let's talk about that positive attitude and what about the power of prayer? There are some studies that show patients who pray tend to do better. And I can tell you this, Dr. Ahmad told me he has no doubt patients who pray and those who think positively have better outcomes. In addition to the power of prayer and early detection, research says, says adding color to your plate can give you a cancer-fighting meal. Fruits and veggies that are stocked with color are also stocked with cancer-fighting compounds. Broccoli is a cancer-preventing superfood. But keep in mind, microwaving broccoli destroys 97% of the vegetable's cancer-protective flavonoids. Cranberries, carrots, and squash all have large amounts of antioxidants. And try substituting leafy green lettuce or spinach for your salad instead of iceberg lettuce. According to the U.S. National Cancer Institute, 35% of cancer deaths in the U.S. can be attributed to diets that are high in fat, low in fruit, vegetables, and fiber. So fill your plate with lots of healthy, colorful food. One woman is diagnosed with breast cancer every three minutes, and one woman will die of breast cancer every 13 minutes in the United States. But many are trying to raise money for research that could change those statistics. Now, you've heard of walks for various causes before, but they're usually one mile. This was different. It was 60 miles. Nina Radetich and I went to Phoenix in October to check out the breast cancer three-day. We found it extraordinary. Good job. Thank you. By the end of day two, walkers were struggling. They had clocked 40 miles, but had another 20 to go. Their feet hurt, they were exhausted and determined. Massaging my daughter Emily's calf. She's just finished another 20 mile day. She's working, walking on the three day, and her dad and I are just really, really proud of her. So if we can take away just a little bit of the aches and pains, we're here to do that. Emily and the 1,700 other walkers will sleep here tonight in two-person tents spread across this football field. In the center of this massive home away from home, we find cancer survivor Peggy Kornick. Are you tempted to quit walking? No. These guys can make me go on and on and on. And I keep saying to myself, if, um, if you can survive the chemo, which was the roughest part, you can survive a walk. water. It is just the thing to help achy, tired feet. Although it sounds pretty painful right now, the walkers tell me it works fabulous the next day. There are aches and pains that are a little bit more serious, though. Things like severe blisters and sprains. Today alone, they've helped over 500 walkers here at the medical help area, and they've started 50 IVs. Still, medics tell me these women and men won't give up. I mean, they're troopers. You know, for the most part, we would tell them to play Play it safe, you know, go home, and they just look at us like we're crazy. They're like, no, 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 no. I've got people I got to do this for. I've lost family members. I've got people who have been diagnosed. There is no way in the world you're going to keep me from, from walking. The following day, we get a better view of how many volunteers uh, water. make this three day walk happen. Hi, Jenny, people. We got a nice big meal coming out. From the sweep van that picks up walkers who can't take another step. Yeah. 
to the food crew feeding hungry, tired bodies along the walk route. My mother uh, passed away from cancer four years ago. My sister was diagnosed with cancer three months ago. Everyone here has a story with the latest chapter in common. 60 miles of painful steps that could one day lead to a cure. It was incredible. The three-day breast cancer walk in Arizona raised over $4 million. The walk takes place every year in 12 cities throughout the United States. And coming up, we'll introduce you to a local woman determined to finish that three-day breast cancer walk. Uh, my body has been terrible. The training is so different than this actual walk. Find out why Las Vegas Rhonda Martin is so motivated and see if she actually completed the 60 miles. Plus, learn what resources are available here in Las Vegas to help you and the ones you love cope with cancer. Knowing about crime before it comes to your neighborhood. How? News 3 is the only station that tracks it. Crime Tracker 3. Neither about it. Digging deeper to spot crime patterns. Watching out for your safety. News 3. Watching out for you. This portion of today's Healthline 3 special report is brought to you by Weight Watchers. It's not uncommon for someone to say they're hoping for a cancer cure, but when those dreamers begin taking steps to find a cure, their hope becomes extraordinary. In October, walkers put their bodies to the ultimate test to remember the survivors and those they've lost. One local woman made the trek to Arizona for the experience of a lifetime. News 3's Nina Radetich caught up with her as she trained for the breast cancer three day, and then we stayed with her every step of her 60 mile journey. Oh yeah, we started May 9th. A 24 week training program to prepare for the test of her life. So Saturday and Sunday are just big days. Yeah, they're just huge. I'm pretty much walking all day long. Rhonda Martin has big plans. In just a few short weeks, she'll join her two sisters and their four teammates for the breast cancer three day in Arizona. It's a 60 mile walk over three days to raise money for breast cancer research. Right here, she is the aunt that, one of the aunts that I'm walking for. Rhonda's lucky. Those that she's walking for have all survived the disease. But many of the people she'll meet in Arizona aren't as lucky. It's a warm day in Tempe, but the heat is not dampening anyone's enthusiasm. These people have been walking now for over 40 miles in just two days, and our Rhonda Martin is among them. Next year we'll be more prepared on the sleeping arrangements. <laughs> we caught up with her as she was getting ready to hit the sack. The first day, I think we started at 7.30 or 8. Oh, gosh. And I actually, I only walked until about 1.30. Rhonda didn't imagine it would be this physically grueling. My knee and my um, foot, I, something's been popping in my foot. But she remains upbeat. This is an experience I'll never ever forget. It's absolutely wonderful. Day three and the finish line are in sight and she's determined to make it her strongest day yet. Tomorrow's gonna be a pretty emotional day. What do you expect? Oh, tomorrow's gonna be very emotional. We're gonna have tissue galore. They made a phrase or said a phrase on um, Friday morning that hopefully our children won't ever know what breast cancer is or when they're old enough to do the three day walk there won't have to be a three day walk and that just touched me so bad because I have two daughters. It's that thought that'll keep her going as she <laughs> tackles the last 18 miles. On the last day of her trek Rhonda seems to be in good spirits. She rode the van to the lunch stop, then decided to tough it out for the rest of the afternoon, the hottest day of all three. But it was worth it as she rounded the corner to this. I made it finally. The feeling is indescribable. This is very emotional. Coming through all these people that have walked and that have done this before and then to finally get here and just see everybody's faces and it's just, it's great. I mean, it makes the whole day, a whole weekend worthwhile. Days of walking behind her and one very proud sister waiting at the finish line. Thank you for doing it. Yay. Rhonda made it over 30 miles, an unbelievable accomplishment. See, she says she'd like to go back next year as a crew member instead. All told, the Arizona Breast Cancer 3-Day raised over $4.5 million for breast cancer research.
If you or someone you love has been diagnosed with cancer, you might be wondering where to turn to for help in Las Vegas. Well, Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada publishes this resource guide every year for Las Vegans. In it, you'll find oncologists, support groups, financial help, and more. You can pick this up at any of the Comprehensive Cancer Centers throughout the Valley. You know, less than four months ago, a brand new $52 million cancer facility opened in Summerlin, the Nevada Cancer Institute. As the Healthline 3 team discovered, the new facility offers something new for Nevadans. This is a typical research lab uh -huh. and a lot of, I guess, expensive equipments and microscopes. It's a lab designed to find cancer cures, and Dr. Nam Huang Deng is the man behind the microscope. The goal of our lab is to develop new treatments. An expert in blood cancers, Dr. Dang relocated his entire family to be a part of this world-class facility. The, the thing that was um, that interests me initially was the idea of setting things up from the ground floor and be, being part of a cancer center that is built from the bottom. Cancer patients used to travel out of state for phase one clinical trials, but the Nevada Cancer Institute has changed that. The clinical trials and phase ones are really f new drugs um, that have the potential of working. The most so cutting edge. Exactly. It is the most cutting edge you can get. And if street signs around the Institute are any symbol for what the future holds, the facility is well on its way to changing the future of cancer patients. Now, clinical trials were already available in Southern Nevada, but the Nevada Cancer Institute offers phase one trials. That is a big difference because it means patients who've tried everything else to fight their cancer can now access trial drugs years sooner. For more information on the Nevada Cancer Institute, log on to our website, kpbc.com, and click on Healthline 3. Okay, let's talk cancer myths. From cell phones and bug spray to eating red meat, there are a lot of cancer myths out there. The Healthline 3 team wants to set the record straight. Electronic devices like cell phones can cause cancer in people who overuse them. A few studies link a, suggested a link with certain rare types of brain tumors, but the consensus among well-designed population studies is that there is no consistent association between cell phone use and brain cancer. That's a myth. Household bug spray can cause cancer. That's a myth. Available evidence does not suggest a link between household use of pesticides, bug spray, and cancer. How about this one? Regularly eating meat cooked on a charcoal grill won't increase cancer risk. Myth. The truth is you can increase your cancer risk by eating too much grilled red meat or chicken or even meat pan fried at a very high temperature. We'll be right back. From the producers, the editors, the photographers, and the reporters. To the master control operators, the production crew, and the engineers. On behalf of all of us who make News 3 at 6 happen, happy, happy holidays. holidays. Fans of the Review Journal's John L. Smith know that his daughter Amelia has been fighting cancer. Doctors here in Las Vegas discovered Amelia had a malignant brain tumor in 2004. I visited Amelia about a year ago while she was in the hospital. Well, we just ask that you continue to keep Amelia in your thoughts and prayers as she is continuing to fight her cancer. It has now spread to uh, her back. We love Amelia. Please keep her in your thoughts. As we celebrate the beginning of a new year, make this the year you get checked and protect your family. Early detection really is the key. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day.